Hello, everyone. It's Deborah Kozowski, and welcome to another Millionaire Woman Show podcast. Today, I wanted to talk to you about self judgment, about guilt, about shame. Really, unscripted conversation. Recently, I was having a discussion with friends, and we were talking about those beliefs that hold us back from truly going after the things that we want and thinking about what could be some underlying beliefs that we don't know about. And often people will say, you know, it's attributed to childhood, um, different things that have occurred. And I'm like, you know what, I've had a really, I would say a pretty decent life. And yeah, things go array and things go off course. There's moments of crisis and chaos. But overall, I think it's pretty sweet. So I wanted to talk to you today because I know that all of us have different challenges. All of us see the world a different way. And the reason I say, you know, it's pretty sweet, it might be that I wear rose colored glasses most of the time. With that, I am unapologetic about that because it helps me move through the world in a different way, show up as I want to show up. And when I think about feeling guilty, feeling shame, and self-judgment, I, as we were talking about this letting go of a belief and thinking about what could be in the way of reaching even higher up-leveling place of where I'd like to be in my business, my life, my relationships, and how connected I feel. And it was really interesting to, you know, talk to different people. And, you know, one of the things that keeps coming up in my life is about focusing on breathing, focusing on ensuring I'm breathing fully in, but also exhaling, remembering to pause in the moments, to sit in the moment, whatever emotion comes up. So I was doing that one night. And I woke up to this message that was what you need to let go of. Forgive yourself for the anger you feel toward yourself. And I was like, what? What is this? I'm like, what anger toward myself? I thought I was pretty good at filtering my, you know, inner critic. Um, and then I started journaling. I thought, okay, I was going to go to the gym and I thought, okay, I'm going to journal. I'm going to journal everything out and see what comes up for me. And, you know, anger has shown up in my life in different forms of different people. And, you know, I think I've been very mindful to really tune the anger and use it in productive ways. But when I realized that it was about the anger toward myself, what that really was, is self-judgment. And realizing how I allowed others to define me. I allowed it. So what, and may, maybe this might resonate with you, and maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one in the world who's going through it. But it was very interesting to me when I started to write out different scenarios where people have made comments. Deb, you're too generous. Deb, why did you spend money on that? Deb, why would you do this? Oh, you just want to be in the spotlight. And as I started looking at these comments, I recognized a pattern that had occurred. And then, you know, people would say, go deeper, go deeper to when you were younger. And here's the big impact that I realized. So when I was eight years old, I lost a family member in a tragic accident. And the following Christmas, I was hiding in the bathroom, waiting for one of my relatives to come in to my grandparents' home. I had made this special gift for them. And I was so excited. And I still to this day don't remember what the gift was. But I had this gift and I was hiding in the bathroom because the bathroom was an earshot and I can see directly to the front door. 
And as soon as the door would open, I would run out and say, is he there yet? Is he here yet? Is he here yet? And they'd say, and there would be this hand on my shoulder that says, Deborah, now is not the time to share your gifts. And then I would retreat back to the bathroom and I'd be watching for him again. The door would open. I'm like, oh, he's here. So excited. And I'd run out the door. And again, this hand went on my shoulder and said, Deborah, now is not the time to share your gifts. Now, if you know eight-year-old kids, you know that we're pretty persistent people. So I went back to the bathroom. I came running back out as soon as the door opened. And it was the family member um, who was at the front door who was having a wave of grief. And I came running out because I was so excited because I thought my gift would change everything. I could change the world, my world, what was going on around it, the environment. And the hand went on my shoulder and said, Deborah, now is not the time to share your gifts. You know, I didn't uncover this story until I was in my coaching program when we were talking about signature presence. And this was in 2014. And I was like, where is this coming from? So I, I went and talked to my dad. I went, you know, I shared a little bit with my mom, but my, my dad had a good sense of what was going on for me. And I realized it took me a few years later, just, you know, probably in the past two years that I recognize what did that eight-year-old Deborah tell herself? Well, that eight-year-old Deborah told herself, first of all, the first piece that came up for me is that there was guilt and shame because why, what could be so awful in the world that I wouldn't be able to share my gift? And as an eight-year-old, you must have done something bad. Therefore, I am bad. So I had this underlying belief that I was bad, not to share my gifts. And not that I haven't been sharing my gifts, but I know that there's this little bit of resistance. There's this little bit of shrinking back into smallness. And we know that doesn't serve the world when we shrink and don't share our gifts. And that guilt and shame and so when you think about how our thoughts influence how we feel and the actions we take and the results we want to get. Now, if I'm thinking I'm bad and I'm shaming myself into this self-shame cycle because it's judgment that I must not be meeting the criteria or standard of another person. So I allow them to define me. And by doing so, I move into not living up into this perfect image of what they see myself that I should be, or I'm not enough. And then you go into guilt. So what happens is, is when you have this thought that you're bad or you're guilty for something, that you know, you're not going to take certain actions because you're going to put in, move from self-judgment into self-sabotage. Yeah, crazy, I know. And, um, you know, as I recognize this, I think about all of the energy, the energy gets tied up into that narrative that can be used in this present moment for the impact I want to make in the world. And, you know, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, so what I then did is I went through another bunch of different scenarios where I've told myself this. Because it's truly about the stories that we tell ourselves. And, you know, guilt and shame, they're not necessarily productive um, emotions in the fact that guilt can be. Guilt can be used to motivate us. And what it put me into is this perpetual cycle of self-improvement. If, if I get better, they'll accept me. If I work harder, they'll accept me. I won't get rejected. I won't get judged. So it turned into that if I judge myself, 
I will protect myself from rejection of others. And, uh, and I won't fail. Because if I fail, or I do something first, I won't be hurt by other people. And wow, you know, that was mind blowing. It wasn't serving me. And, you know, I wanted to put this out there because I want people to understand how valuable they are. And there may be people who've come into your life and le left your life and you don't have this comprehension of why. And you can start telling yourself that maybe you were not enough. Maybe you weren't important enough. And that you weren't perfect enough. But I want to hear, I want to make sure I emphasize to you how important you truly are. Because you have these gifts that are only unique to you. You have the experiences that are only unique to you. And this is why someone cannot duplicate the work that you've been called to do. Now, if you have this inner calling, this feeling, this drive, this fire within you to do something spectacular in life, first of all, I want you to notice that no one beside you has the same calling as you. And even if they have something similar, it is not the same as you. So when you have a dream, and this is what was shared with me recently, if you have a dream, it was brought to you. And I firmly believe this. And I also know that if we don't fulfill our dreams, you'll see the dream in front of you fulfilled by someone else. And you'll be like, oh, I had this dream once. And how come I didn't follow through on it? Well, what happens is it needs to move to someone else because that dream still needs to be fulfilled. But the clincher was when this person said, dreams and your calling, your personal you know, actions and everything that you put behind it, they're not separate from you. But if you give up on your dream, your dream gives up on you and needs to go to someone else. And I was just like, whoa. So even more the reason for me to make this um, podcast today is that I want you to realize how spectacular you are. Because as I went through that guilt, shame, wanting to understand it more, I came across a really great quote that I want to share. So Joseph Campbell said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And sometimes those dreams are so big that they scare us. And it's the underlying fear that leads us to judging ourselves, thinking that we're not good enough to go to that next level. And in Brene Brown's book, Dare to Lead, she talks about Joseph Campbell's lesson is that when you find the courage to enter the cave, you're never going in to secure your own treasure or your own wealth. You face your fears to find the power and the wisdom to serve others. So instead of the guilt of being that I've done something wrong, looking at our behaviors and putting it against our values, our standards, if that's the case, you can course correct. We can use guilt as a motivator. But we don't want to use it to the fact that you're angry at yourself in that judgment that you don't measure up to someone else's standard. And this is the key thing. Letting others' definitions or their comments that we internalize the external critics in our lives. We don't want to take the external critic. Lord knows we have enough self-doubt of our own. Why let other people activate those doubts when we've been able to silence them? And, you know, even, you know, as a mom, I think moms have a lot of mom guilt. And um, I think of different situations where there's times I thought, well, I could have protected my child better, or I could have prevented them from having that experience. And you know, even though that could be my wish and that could be my want, what I've also come to realize is 
that they also have their own journey. And when I am doing my best and being my best me, whatever result I get is who I was in that moment. And there's other times where I think I've like, whew, I've, I've nailed it. And there'll be other times I'll say, you're overprotective mom, back off a bit, you know? So it's being able to find that balance and understand that um, some of that perfection and that not enoughness can be used in a positive way. And that this confidence that we seek in being confident, but wanting people to approve of us, basically, so that we live up to their standards, we lose sight of ourselves. What is it that's my standard? What's important to me? So what that came to me to realize is instead of feeling that guilt to really step inside of myself and focus on my own internal personal mastery. And when you can, you know, first of all, it was about forgiving myself for being that not only having my inner critic, but holy man, it was winning and it led to some self-sabotage. And now that, you know, I always have this saying, you probably heard me say it a few times, once you're self-aware, there's no turning back. And, you know, and some of the times what it has taught me is lessons, lessons that I needed to set stronger boundaries, lessons that I needed to be impeccable with my word, lessons that said, keep working at it. Some of the unrealistic expectations I've had to really shift and say, you know what? Why are you expecting perfection when you're a beginner? That I'm comparing myself to people who are further along on the journey, not re reminding myself that I'm just getting started. And by doing that, we can be so hard on ourselves that we're not going to take action because we get into the fixed mindset part of what's the point or if I was clean eating and people in the house would say hey I can't cook anything for you because you know I don't know what to cook for you and then they get frustrated and then I'd be like oh well I'll get rid of clean eating and I'm like you know what but I feel really good when I clean eat so it's up to me to put in the steps that is going to work for me so this takes us back to accountability. It takes us back to responsibility. And someone uh, dear to me also said, Deborah, anger, guilt, perfection, that in not, not enoughness, those feelings, do not suppress those things. Even though they feel negative to you, they're not meant to be suppressed because they can be used in a good way. It's just like when you go to a job interview and they ask you about your weaknesses and thinking about how can I um, talk about these weaknesses and how can they be to my benefit in a strong way, being able to turn them into a strength. So one of the things that I want to tell you about these emotions that you might be having is the anger, the guilt, the frustration um, that... First of all, we need to stop and recognize the emotion and sit with that feeling because emotions act as a compass. They are directing us. They are warning us. They're attempting to protect us. And it's kind of like, okay, stop for a moment. Pay attention to this moment. And what is it wanting to tell me? What is the lesson I need to learn? So if I was feeling jealous, it would mean, you know what, I want something like that or similar to that. That's a call to action. And if you've gone through my videos, there is a podcast on jealousy as a call to action. If I'm angry, there can be an underlying fear. What is the fear underlying that? Fear of failure, fear of not being accepted, fear of rejection. There's so many different things that could be under those layers. So we need to start paying attention to what is under those layers. What is really holding us back? The other one was guilt for shining. And, you know, people will say guilt for shining or, or even looking flawed. 
people have guilt for that too, because they feel that not enoughness. But if I go back to the guilt for outshining, you might have a money story that, oh, how dare I make more money than my mom and dad ever did? Or how can I get ahead over this sibling or this sibling, you know, has this going on? How, how could I do this? Won't I feel guilty for that? And you fill in the blank. But I think you know what I'm getting at. And what would happen is if someone challenged me with their belief, and sometimes, you know, people can use guilt in cultures and um, long legacy of culture, um, different areas where shame, shame and guilt is used to manipulate you to do what they want you to do. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me when now when I start breaking things down, what happens to me is when I go into that not enoughness, I want to prove to other people what I'm capable of. And I can use it in a positive way in the fact that it ups my game, makes me work harder. I work more disciplined. The negative side is if I work solely to prove to them, I can go into a place of resentment versus if I'm proving to myself what I'm capable of. I will accomplish many things. It's like, holy man, you blow me away, Deb. You know, I'm in awe of myself. And I think that's what we need to see. We need to see that we're our own heroes. And when I did my first marathon, I was my hero. I did something I never, ever considered. First of all, I never thought I'd ever run a marathon. It wasn't even something I thought about. And just like my first book. I never grew up thinking I was going to be an author. I loved books, but I never truly knew if I had that dream within me. But obviously, three books later and working on a fourth, that it's true, you know? So our dreams evolve over time, but we need to pay attention to that story of what am I telling myself? That self-judgment. And it was so subtle that I was like, forgive myself. What's this all about? And it was about the self-judgment because if someone, I took in another person's comment, I internalized an external critic to be my truth. And I wanted to live up to that standard so that they would accept me. Huh. And in turn, I rejected what I believed about myself or the standards or values I had for myself. So I would silence, I would withdraw, I'd go into proving. And although there is a positive side, what I want to share with you most of all, it's energy sucking. It sucks the energy out of you like a vampire sucking blood, you know, so really thinking about how we can shift and realize that we're perfectly imperfect. We're more than enough, we're enough just because we're here. And we can gain and hone our talents, develop abilities, hone our skills, become more than we ever thought possible because we're not even using our full potential, releasing energy from the past, putting it here into our present so we can focus on where it is and the mission and messages that you are here to share. So not only... You know, do we need to silence our inner critics? We need to silence and resist letting others define us from the external critic. We need to embrace who we are, perfectly imperfect, knowing that each of us is doing the best that we can in the moment. To not be fearful of taking actions and taking calculated risks and being able to adjust the actions as we go, ask more questions as we go. So it's really important to pay attention to that inner critic. What are you telling yourself? Why do you think you don't measure up? One of the wonderful phrases someone said to me when I said, you know, 
there's moments I think that I've betrayed myself by not following through on something I felt was important to me. And I gave away my power. And she gave such a beautiful framing that it wasn't about giving away the power. It was about how I was not able to use that power with that person. And I was like, wow. Because if I truly knew at that moment how to use that power with that individual, I would not have internalized another person's external criticism, direction, their values, their standards, and let it define me versus standing in my power, truly knowing my self-worth and saying, thank you, but I have my own agenda and I appreciate your feedback. So what I want to do is empower you to also forgive yourself and stop feeling guilty. And maybe you're not feeling guilt. Maybe you have have had moments of self-judgment and that you've self-sabotaged because you've internalized and you listened to a story that wasn't true. It was a false truth and you bought into it. So one of the things that I want to share with you is to catch any of those negative thoughts that you might be having, that self-judgment, turn it off, tell it to stop. <laughs> Don't entertain the doubts of others to kind of ignite your own because you've silenced it. You've learned how to work with that inner critic. And, you know, our recent guest, Mike Zeller, he talked about he has Magic Mike and Weak Ass Willie. Well, I think I have Daring Deborah and uh, Deadbeat Deborah. And who is it that empowers you? So I really want you to think about focusing on your strengths, truly loving and embracing who you are, body and mind, and knowing that who you are in this moment is the best version of you at this moment. And you can always continue to improve because that's not a practice I plan to stop because I'm committed to continuous learning and self-improvement, but for doing it for the right reasons, not to prove it to someone else that I can be capable or have the capacity to do something, but to really showcase and step into who I am. And today I want to challenge you to step into who you are. There is no bad, wrong mistakes. We're in this life for a learning experience. And truly identifying and learning who we are, understanding our purpose, really mastering who we are, being able to give to others, and ultimately changing the world. So one of the things that I want to challenge you today as you're listening to this podcast is I want you to focus on your own growth, focus on your own personal mastery, to be in awe of the value of who you are, is your worth and how you bring it to the world. You don't need permission to share your gifts. Because I truly don't even know if I ever gave that gift. It's probably one of my greatest regrets. But to this day, what I realize more than anything in the world is in that moment, that eight-year-old little Deborah thought she could change the world. She did. That world in that moment. And I truly believe that I can. I can't go back to that moment and change it. But what the gift was, the gift was me. The gift was me. And I'm here to tell you that you are the gift. You are the miracle that you need. And please, I'm imploring on you. <laughs> My mission is to ensure that you are sharing your gifts 
fully. So go out and change the world. Please go over to my website at www.debrakazowski.com where you're going to get your three-part video course on making habits stick so that you can put those goals, your dreams, put focus and consistency built into there and make things happen. As Mahama Gandhi said, go out and be the change you wish to see in the world. And my wish for you as always is go out and make today great and start sharing those gifts.